Welcome everyone to another episode of Stories of S's. This is our 12th episode. I am your co-host Gabby. And I'm Daniel. Hey. Happy to have everyone back here again for another great episode this week. Um, this week we're actually going to talk about a local um, myth, Grandmother Spider the weaver and maker of humanity in Native American um, stories and mythologies. Uh, Danny, what do you know about Spider Grandmother or Spider Woman? Mm -hmm. So she is part of the Navajo tradition in North America, but she is also known like in several other traditions. Um, and she basically plays a crucial role in the creation of the universe and also by elevating creatures and standing for creativity and weaving and all type of other stuff that is related with the womanhood. Nice, yeah. So that's what we will be talking about today. Um, today's resources are... Spinning a Bigendered Identity in Silco Ceremony and Puey's Kiss of the Spider Woman by Matthew Turi, a um, Turkish master thesis uh, named Silent Screams, a survival through the legends in The Woman Who Owned the Shadows. Um, it's based on the book by modernist Native American writer Polygon Allen's The Woman Who Owned the Shadows. A couple of YouTube videos, uh, one of them specifically the Native American Spider Woman by Katie Draws and um, IndianAffairs.org. So today we delve into the rich and enchanting mythologies of the Hopi and Navajo cultures, exploring the intriguing narratives surrounding the revered figure of Spider Woman, Spider Grandmother. In the heart of Hopi mythology, we encounter the enigmatic presence of Spider Grandmother, known as, and I apologize for my mispronunciation, but my closest guess is Kokian Wuti in the Hopi language. This mystical being has the ability to take on the guise of an old timeless woman or transform into the shape of a common spider in various Hopi stories. Picture this. When in her spider form, she resides underground in a hold reminiscent of a sacred kiva, which is basically like a stone round table, um, specifically found in the southwestern United States. When called upon, spider grandmother um, extends her benevolent hand, offering guidance, wisdom, and even medicinal cures to those seeking her aid. She's not merely a character, but a symbol of leadership and wisdom embodying the essence of goddess in Hopi tradition. Now, let's journey into the realm of the Navajo tradition, where the cosmos were once plunged into chaos until the arrival of the esteemed Spider Woman. In the pre-existing darkness, the Holy Ones decided to bring forth a new world, one defined by light and beauty. Enter Spider Woman, a pivotal figure in the cosmic transformation, instrumental in creating a stable and harmonious world. Spider Woman's gift for weaving played a crucial role. Her intricate patterns, symbolic of different faces of the natural world, adorn the fabric of this newfound reality. What makes this creation story even more captivating is Spider Woman's role as a beacon of knowledge and wisdom. As a caretaker of the world, she not only wove the physical fabric of reality, but also wove the threads of enlightenment. Spider Woman became a guide imparting essential skills like weaving to others and leading them on a spiritual journey toward profound understanding. The legend of Spider Woman holds a profound place in Navajo culture, symbolizing the values of creativity, balance, and harmony. According to Navajo belief, Spider Woman is not merely a deity, she is the cosmic weaver, the architect of the universe. Through her divine ability to weave, she crafted the world and everything in it. Moreover, she bestowed upon the Navajo people the sacred art of weaving, a skill that extends beyond the loom into every fabric of their lives. 
through her teachings on balance within the mind, body, and soul, Spider Woman remains a guiding force, encouraging the spread of beauty and harmony. So let's read the most popular myth, which is called the first tale. In the beginning, there were only two, Tawa, the sun god, and Spider Woman, the earth goddess. All the mysteries and powers in the above belonged to Tawa, while Spider Woman controlled the magic of the below. In the underworld, abode of the gods, they dwelt, and they were all. There was neither man, nor woman, bird, nor beast, no living thing until these two willed it to be. In time, it came to them that there should be other gods to share their labors. So Tawa divided himself, and there came Miyun Wu, god of all life germs. Spider Woman also divided herself, so that there was Hutsrui Wuti, woman of the hard substances, the goddess of all hard ornaments of wealth, such as coral, turquoise, silver, and shell. Hutsrui Wuti became the always bride of Tawa. They were the first lovers, and of their union there came into being the marvelous ones, the magic twins, Huukonoya, the youth, and Pulonoya, the echo. As time enrolled, there followed Ika Navaya, ancient of the six, the four world quarters, the above and below, Man Eagle, the great plumed serpent, and many others. But Masawu, the death god, did not come of these two, but was bad magic, who appeared only after the making of creatures. And then it came about that these two had one thought, and that it was a mighty thought that they would make the earth to be between the above and the tile below, where no, where now lay shimmering only the endless waters. So they sat them side by side, swaying their beautiful bronze bodies to the pulsing music of their own great voices, making the first magic song. A song of rushing wind and flowing waters, a song of light and sound and life. I am Tawa saying the sun god, I am light, I am life, I am father of all that shall ever come. I am Kokian Wuti, the spider woman crooned in softer note. I receive light and nourish life. I am mother of all that shall ever come. Many strange thoughts are forming in my mind, beautiful forms of birds to float in the above, of beasts to move upon the earth and fish to swim in the waters, in Tone Tawa. Now, let these things that move in the thought of my lord appear, chanted Spider Woman. The while, with her slender fingers, she caught up clay from beside her and made the thoughts of Tawa take form. One by one, she shaped them and laid them aside, but they breathed not nor moved. We must do something about this, said Tawa. It is not good that they lie thus still and quiet. Each thing that has a form must also have a spirit. So now, my beloved, we must make a mighty magic. They laid a white blanket over the many figures, a cunningly woven woolen blanket, fleecy as a cloud, and made a mighty incantation over it. And soon the figure stirred and breathed. Now let us make ones like unto you and me so that they may rule over and enjoy these lesser creatures, sang Tawa. And Spider Woman shaped the thoughts of her lord into man figures and woman figures like unto their own. But after the blanket magic had been made, the figures still stayed inert. So Spider Woman gathered them all in her arms and cradled them in her warm young bosom, while Tawa bent his glowing eyes upon them. The two now sang the magic song of life over them, and at last each man figure and woman figure breathed and lived. Now that was a good thing and a mighty thing, quoth Tawa, so now all this is finished and there shall be no new things made by us. Those things we have made shall multiply, 
each one after his own kind. I will make a journey across the above each day to shed my light upon them and return each night to Hutruiwuti. And now I shall go to turn my blazing shield upon the endless waters so that the dry land may appear. And this day will be the first day upon the earth. Now I shall lead all these created things to the land that you shall cause to appear above the waters, said Spider-Woman. Then Tawa took down his burnished shield from the turquoise wall of the kiva and swiftly mounted his glorious way to the above. After Spider-Woman had bent her wise, all-seeing eyes upon the thronging creatures about her, she wound her way among them, separating them into groups. Thus and thus shall you be, and thus shall you remain, each one in his own tribe forever. You are Tsunis, you are Kohoninos, you are Pautes, the Hobis, all all people, were named by Kokyamuti then. Placing her magic twins beside her, Spider Woman called all the people to follow where she well led. Through all the four great caverns of the underworld, she led them up until they finally came to an opening, a sipapu, which led above. This came out at the lowest depth of the Pisces Baya, the Colorado River, and was the place where the people were to come to gather salt. So lately had the endless waters gone down that the turkey, Koyona, pushing eagerly ahead, dragged his tail feathers in the black mud where tiled dark bands were to remain forever. Morning dove flew overhead, calling to some to follow, and those who followed where his sharp eyes had spied out springs and built beside them were called Huwin Yamu, after him. So Spider Woman chose her creature to lead each clan to a place to build their house. The puma, the snake, the antelope, the deer, and other horned creatures each led a clan to a place to build their house. Each clan henceforth bore the name of the creature who had led them. The spider woman spoke to them thus, The woman of the clan shall build the house, and the family name shall descend through her. She shall be the house builder and homemaker. She shall mold the jars for the storing of food and water. She shall grind the grain for food and tenderly rear the young. The man of the clan shall be kivas of stone under the ground where he shall play homage to his gods. In these kivas, the man shall make a sand pictures, shall make sand pictures which will be his altars. Of colored sand shall he make them, and they shall be called ponya. After council, I shall whisper to him. He shall make prayer sticks or paho to place upon the ponya to bear his prayers. There shall be the Wupo Paho, the great Paho, which is mine. There shall be four Paho of blue, the Ka Ka Paho, one, of the great, one for the great Tawa, one for Muyin Wu, one for the woman of hard substances, and one for the ancient of six. Each of these Paho must be cunningly and secretly wrought with prayer and song. The man, too, shall weave the clan blankets with their proper symbols. The snake clan shall have its symbol, and the antelope clan its symbol, too. Thus it shall be for each clan. Many shall fashion himself weapons and furnish his family with game. Stooping down, she gathered some sand in her hand, letting it run out in a thin, continuous stream. See the movement of the sand? That is the life that will cause all things therein to grow. The great plumed serpent, lightning, will rear and strike the earth to fertilize it. Rain cloud will pour down waters, and Tawa will smile upon it so that green things will spring up to feed my children. Her eyes now sought the above where Tawa was descending toward his western kiva in all the glory of red and gold. I go now. But have no fear, for we too will be watching over you. Look upon me now, my children, here I leave. Obey the words I have given you, and all will be well. And if you are in need of help, call upon me, and I shall send my sons to your aid. 
The people gazed wide upon her shining beauty. Her woven upper garment of soft white wool hung tunic wise over her blue skirt. On its left t- on its left side was woven a band of bearing the young the woman's symbols. On its left side was woven a band bearing the woman's symbols, the butterfly and the squash blossom, in designs of red and yellow and green with bands of black appearing between. Her beautiful neck was hung with heavy necklaces of turquoise shell and coral, and pendants of the same hung from her earrings. Her face was fair, with warm eyes and tender red lips, and her form most graceful. Upon her small feet were skin boots of gleaming white, and now they turned toward where the sand spun about in a whirlpool fashion. She held up her right hand and smiled upon them, then steeped upon the whirling sand. Wonder of wonders, before their eyes, the sand seemed to suck her swiftly down until she disappeared entirely from their sight. And that was just one of the many stories of Spider Woman or Grandmother Spider. Wow, that was incredible. So long, really inspirational though. I really like the part when they, um, and I don't think the story goes too deep into that, but the different stages of the world or like levels of the world when they started to create something and then they just like, had something created but it was basically lacking a soul lacking like the right appearance to actually be human and the spider woman managed to like elevate those creatures in their manners and their behaviors and their appearance yeah kind of like like a mother raising children right like yeah that story kind of goes into like the four stages of rearing a child right like they're an infant that they're a child then they're a teenager then they're an adult right like kind mm-hmm. of that same story of it it's very different from i guess the creation story from the judeo-christian side where it's like and then man was created in one day and boom done but this was kind of like a slow i would say evolution of creating men and women of Mm -hmm. you know it doesn't rome wasn't built in a day and neither were (laughs) humans right what yeah and there's also like still in today's traditions like i think like when girls become women they are supposed to go down in the valley at the um spider rock which is i think like in arizona area Mm -hmm. it's in the southwestern usa yeah And they have to look for a spider web that is basically struck by sunlight and it has little water beads on it. Mm -hmm. And then they have to like put their hand on it and like get in touch with the spider woman. So every young girl that comes to grow into womanhood has to do that. Yeah, it's like really beautiful, just kind of... um. I think our modern society doesn't have that same like uh, entrance into womanhood like in a very sacred way um, like the southwestern tribes of the U.S. Um, I think they really go for it, you know, highlighting how special this is. I agree. And you can see that. Like, I was just talking, so seeing this funny video, like, on Instagram. And, you know, like, all those girls from, like, middle schools, they come into middle school pretending like they are adults with their Stanley Cups and trying to be cool and stuff. And like, you get, like, those information and those, like, ideas and symbols of, like, womanhood or, like, growing up, like, so far down so early nowadays just because mm-hmm. you can consume all this stuff, right? And if someone can make money off of it and you advertise it, it will reach certain people and then you will leave this like natural areas of like, oh, okay, you're entering like the next stage in life, right? Because you, you can already see and experience. There's no like continuation, like Like, there's no like actual like, okay, now you can do it. Like I remember like when I was younger, 
um like my parents had certain rules for me like until you're 13 or 14 like you can't do certain things and then it was like oh my god now that i'm 13 i can finally do this and finally eat ice cream (laughs) (laughs) but just like certain things like that um i think is what um a lot of our western culture believes in like the like eurocentric western culture um and i think that this is like just so beautiful to read about and you know what we're going to talk about now um i had to say like this is has been i guess my my favorite um myth and a story to read about um just because of how like beautiful it is and it I think it really resonates with me. Mm, and it still inspires like today. So mm-hmm. you can, there's like, I don't know if we are going to touch this later, but there are like certain, since she is like the creator, like creativity and mm-hmm, like yeah. weaving, there are still like certain type of rugs that people or Navajo people as their tradition weave And it has like certain symbols on it that Mm -hmm. refer back to the symbols of the spider woman or Mm -hmm. spider grandmother. And that's really cool. Yeah. They still do that and they keep this like tradition running. (laughs) Salem. (laughs) Uh, Daniel stopped petting petting Salem and she just looked at him like, why are you, why did you stop petting me? She's our third member of the podcast today. (laughs) She is. And it's so cold outside. She's go- wearing her sweater. It's crazy. It's like eight degrees and we are in winter wonderland, Michigan. Yeah. Water, winter, wonderland. Okay. So let's get back onto it. Um, so every piece of literature has its own dynamics. Culture is one of the most important dynamics to understand any literature. Each culture sings its own songs, tells its own legends, myths, or tales, and dances within its own ceremonies. For that reason, the symbols cannot be understood in terms of another culture unless the culture's private soul is felt. Right? Like, it's kind of like, I I would say like an inside joke. Like, if you, you can understand a joke from the outside, but unless you really understand the reference, you don't really get it. Like, for example, we were talking about some Colombian sayings, right? And you can get it if I explain it to you. Yeah. Right? But when you live it and you understand it, you're like, oh, like, I I really, really get it. Because you've lived through it. You understand the, the reference, the cultural importance. Um, so in the same way... Um, I think that's what we're going to get into right now. So to start with, Grandmother Spider helps her children when they're in trouble. Um, She will call you when she sees you coming down the path and she will say, Are you here? You have come at the proper time. Come, come, grandchild, with me. Come into my home with me. For me that you have come, you belong to me. Grandmother Spider and the war twins who guard her are ready to help if a person believes and respects them. Spider Woman and her daughter's existence empower courage. In the book, The Woman Who Owned the Shadows, modernist Native American writer Paula Gunn Allen explores the story of Ephany. Ephany embarks on a journey to rediscover her native roots And during this process, she encounters Grandmother Spider. Through a personal connection and the retelling of traditional Native stories passed down through generations, Grandmother Spider guides Ephany. The paper that we're reading um, that talks a lot about this book as well, uh, we'll discuss today um, and delve into the example presented in this book, right? This representation not just of one woman, but many women in many tribes um, and nations uh, of like the native nations. So it's really like summarizing their experiences and reflecting on them? Uh, Maybe not summarizing, but definitely drawing light and trying to represent a lot of them. 
and it will highlight the profound connection to sacred stories and communities that symbolize the journey of numerous Native women. Mm-hmm. In the book, Grandmother Spider tells Ephany the traditional Indian belief about existence and death. Whether the people are what you call alive or dead, those are just words. What you call dead isn't dead. It is a different way of living. According to Native Americans, there is no beginning or end. They believe that people pass another form of living when they die, and this is a transmission. Grandmother Spider calls Ephany to a place that is full of knowledge. She states that it is not important what people believe about Ephany. She calls Ephany to her quote-unquote city. She tells Ephany the story of life and the story of moving. So, like a life circle, Ephany should move and transfer her experiences by writing. Grandmother Spider gives Ephany a mission like she gave Uretsete and Naotsete once upon a time. Your place in the great circling spiral is to help in that story, in that work, to pass on to those who can understand what you have learned. Which is great. It's kind of like no no need to gatekeep. The mm-hmm. knowledge you gain is not just important for you, but can be important for your whole community, for the people that you meet. Um, and you shouldn't be, I would say, like, what's that word? Um, <laughs> greedy with that information and just keep it to yourself. Yeah, like hold it back. But you should be sharing it. Absolutely. And I think it's especially important for tribes that lived in areas with such like little amount of resources available. They have to live in like abundance. So for them, it's really important to do the best they can, share as much as they can when it comes to resources, but also when it comes to knowledge, because the knowledge at the end is increasing re- the re- resources. Uh, resources, right? Right. Um, especially when it comes to uh, Native people, they are really great when living within the land. They never take more than they need. Mm-hmm. Um, and they see uh, other beings of this planet um, as kin. Yeah, it's like keeping it in a balance, right? Right, not overtaking, but knowing what to take and when to take. Grandmother Spider is the old woman spider who weaves us together in a fabric of interconnection. She is the eldest god, the one who remembers. Alan depicts a mythic woman capable of dreaming beings into existence. She also emphasizes that creation need not be a heterosexual production. It can be done with the act of imagination. Again, kind of going with what you were saying and hoping to highlight later that creativity and imagination is very important in creation yeah and again i think like also like just in their like situation of living and how they are living you need to be creative Mm -hmm. on how to work with your resources how to react to certain scenarios right Mm -hmm. yeah old woman dreams both males and females come into being at the same time. They have different missions in life, but in equal ways. In Indian culture, or native culture, men and women are equal, and neither came first, and neither was created as a subordinate to the other. In Laguna Creatrix, um, men and women have complementary missions rather than oppositions. So old woman dreams of equality and circularity in the relationships of Native women and men, both in their mutual affairs and social life. Old woman spirit covers in and out of the mind. And here is a poem that describes that. Old woman, there in the earth, outside you, we wait. Do you dream of birth, bring what is outside inside? Old woman inside, old woman outside, 
old woman there in the sky. We are waiting inside you, dreaming your dream of birthing what is inside, outside. Very pretty, very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Very holistic, like just like circle type of. Yeah, this like circularity idea. It's not like a hierarchy. We're so used to seeing this pyramid, right? In everything we do, mm -hmm. right? It's like, We're just living in a giant pyramid scheme. <laughs> Multi-level marketing. <laughs> yeah. We're just all in an MLM. Some are more uh, real than others. But in this way of teaching, it's not in that triangular pyramid scheme type, but more of a circularity, right? That we're, we all serve different purposes And each purpose is equal, right? You need an older person to pass down wisdom. You need a younger person to help in like physical labors. You need a creative person to help with finding new solutions to problems. You need maybe like a more practical person to apply those creative thoughts. So it's not that one is more important than the other they're all different but they all serve inequality the mm -hmm. same eventually old woman creates the world and her children with imaginative power and she constructs an equal earth for women and men according to native stories grandmother spider is a goddess who creates all the things on the earth and the sky and still she looks after her children when they are in danger In all stories, Grandmother Spider's web symbolizes her love and guard for all the people and harmony between existence. As a role of creator and protective deity, Grandmother Spider uses all her power to protect her people. For Ephany heals when she hears the voice of Spider, Grandmother. It is important to state the significance of Spider Woman for Native American people. Thought and action are one for Grandmother Spider. First, she thinks, and then she acts to weave the threads of life. Grandmother Spider has several identities in different tribes and cultures in the Southwest. She is called Spider Woman. For the Navajo, she is Na Ashe Yi. Um, I'm so sorry if I am not pronouncing it correctly. I am trying. Um... As Zan to the Hopi, uh, I'm so sorry. For the Navajo, she is Na Ashjei As Dan. To the Hopi, she is Kokian Wuti. To the Kiris, she is Che Chenako, Thought Woman. Grandmother Spider creates a world in the process of composition. For her, aesthetic dimensions are essential, and she is carefully designing the land, the sky, lightning, sound, and all living beings. Yet, significantly, there is no real action in her creation process. She only imagines the creation performing her mission. Grandmother Spider thinks of everything and believes everything is related. Like an artist, she creates everything so careful and in detailed way. She has the responsibility for all things in the world, and she always is there when someone is in danger. She intervenes in human affairs and rescues them from danger. As a creator, she never leaves her people alone. Furthermore, she guards people to learn life. She teaches young people traditions. She teaches the young how to be skillful, hunt, make pottery, how to weave because she shows the ways to survive. Pots and baskets are associated with females because of their feminine shapes, so these arts belong to women. Scarberry mentions these arts in her article. The Cherokee say the spider woman fashioned a little clay bowl to carry the sun fragment in, to bring light home for the people, and from then on, pottery became a woman's work, and all the pottery must be dried slowly in the shade before it is put in the heat of the firing oven just as Grandmother Spider's bowl dried in her hand, slowly in the darkness as she traveled toward the land of the sun. Just going to intervene there for a second. 
Pottery is not only for women. We've done it together and it's a lot of fun. It's actually really yeah. hypnotizing to do some pottery. You're just sitting right over the plate that's spinning, shaping your bowl or whatever it is you're doing. And it's really satisfying. So yeah. you should totally try that one. Mm -hmm. Definitely some wheel throwing. Grandmother Spider's art, particularly pottery making, reflects the power of imagination. People draw inspiration from her creations, leading them to innovative and sustain their culture and traditions. This creative process, as highlighted by Scarberry, fosters unity among people with weaving being a metaphorical thread that binds them together. Grandmother Spider serves as a cultural transmitter, sharing her power with the people who, in turn, shape their own lives. This cultural exchange spans generations, making the culture a vibrant and enduring entity. Central to Grandmother Spider's philosophy is the pursuit of wholeness, balance, and harmony in life. In Native American tradition, life is seen as a cyclical process without a clear beginning or end. Grandmother Spider's web, shaped like a cycle, symbolizes the continuous nature of tradition. According to Alan, Thought Woman and Old Spider Woman embody a pervasive spirit characterized by vibrant colors and pulsing rainbows. Thought Woman, also known as Spider Woman, translates her thoughts into actions, representing the creative force from which everything else emerges. She is also associated with maintaining the right balance and harmony. Moreover, Spider Woman's ability to rehabilitate damaged body parts, particularly legs, underscores her resilience and adaptability. To survive, spiders collaborate and skillfully spin robust webs. This weaving process is akin to an author or poet creating long lines in literature. Contemporary Indian authors and poets draw inspiration from Grandmother Spider's creative power incorporating her as a motif in their works. The act of weaving in art is seen as a representation of maintaining relationships, balance, and wholeness, mirroring Grandmother Spider's weaving. American Indian poets often reference Spider Grandmother in their works. For example, Leslie Silkel's Lullaby opens with a mention, with a mention of Grandmother Spider using imagery like sun, wool, light, weaver, and spins to evoke the world of Grandmother Spider. Grandmother Spider provides a valuable gift to her people by teaching them to weave fabric for warmth and cultural remembrance. In gratitude for her exceptional gifts, people honor and respect Grandmother Spider, considering her the guardian of their lives. Grandmother Spider's influence extends to poetry and prose, and she serves as a protector of her children rescuing them when the time is right. Polygon Alley writes a poem about Spider Grandmother and entitles it Grandmother. And this is so beautiful. I'm so excited to read this. Okay. I'm all ears. And we will also be posting this on our story. I know I try to incorporate as much of the poetry and stories that we have available. Um, and this is definitely going to be one of them. Out of her body, she pushed silver thread, light air, and carried it carefully on the dark flying, where nothing moved. Out of her body, she extruded shining wire life and wove the light on the void. From beyond time, beyond oak trees and the bright clear water flow, she was given the work of weaving the strands of her body, her pain, her vision into creation, and the gift of having created to disappear. After her, the women and men weave blankets into tales of life, memories of light and ladders, infinity, eyes and rain. After her, I sit on my laddered rain bearing rug and mend the tear with string. Oh my God, I just got emotional. It's like, oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> Is it done already? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's really nice. I mean, I feel like really like her web, web, her web, German. <laughs> the Germans coming out, her web and the strings 
it's really like that i feel like this is symbolic like for everything that's like connected and flowing for creation for people for nature for like everything that's around right kind of like the that circularity like each string in the web of a spider is very important without that particular string the architecture can fall mm -hmm. and it wouldn't be strong um and it's very connected to everything right like one line can weave into many other lines yeah. And it's also very organized. And it's also very organized. Have you seen those pictures of spiders that were doing webs under different psychedelicas? And you see how their stuff like changes when they are exposed to different type of... Psychedelics. Psychedelics, yeah. It's really crazy. So there's like a well thought process behind it mm -hmm. and you you need to really have everything under control and i think that's what she's standing for right like as mm -hmm. the mother of creation or the word like keep your strings together <laughs> and also it's very intentional right like yeah nothing was created without a purpose no it was created over like those different layers of the world in the evolution, the creation of character and values and bodies and all that type of stuff. Right. So it's, it's very, like a whole process. It's very incredible and I, I just love it. In Paula Gunn Allen's book, she is also intentional in reminding the reader about the real day-to-day -day horrors that many Native women live through. Through the telling of the story of Yellow Woman. Um, I do want to mention that According to the Association on American Indian Affairs, American Indians and Alaska Natives are two and a half times as likely to experience violent crimes and at least two times more likely to experience rape or sexual assault crimes compared to all other races. More than four in five American Indian and Alaska Native women, or 84.3%, have experienced violence in their lifetime. So I just do want to say... On this episode, um, if you are able to support or in any way um, help any of the Native American nations in your state or city, um, especially um, in during this time of year or just really in general, like please go ahead and do so because um, these are really high numbers uh, and they should be very protected people. Yellow Woman's story is passed down from generation to generation, and the different versions may vary from time to time or tribe to tribe. Native Americans tell Yellow Woman stories to emphasize the loss of Native American women and their homecoming physically or psychologically through the storytelling. Although there are lots of different versions, Evil Kachina steals Yellow Woman, Sun steals Yellow Woman, and Silkel's modern version Yellow Woman are the most well-known Yellow Woman stories. Evil Kachina Yellow Woman steals Yellow Woman is told by the Kohiti Pueblo people. And this is um, the story. One day, Yellow Woman goes out of town to fetch water from the river. At the riverbank, she sees and picks up a kicking stick. Evil Kahina or Kachina comes up to her to ask about the kicking stick which he uses as a trick to kidnap the woman. He carries Yellow Woman to his house and forces her to grind corn and make wafers for him while he goes out hunting. Meanwhile, Yellow Woman's husband comes home to find that his wife is gone. He searches around and comes up to the old spider woman, who is also called Spider Grandmother. With Spider Grandmother as a guide, he finds his wife, Yellow Woman, at Evil Kahina's house, they escape from there before Ivo Kahina comes home from hunting. As it is stated, Native Americans respect Grandmother Spider, and she helps and guards them. However, if they retreat from their culture, Grandmother Spider punishes them, especially people who humiliate and demean Grandmother. Hating themselves and their futility, they had begun to kill themselves and each other, wanting to be done with the old ways, the holy things. They had lately begun to hate the spider, 
to ask why their God was not a man. Going back to the fact that many tribes are matrilineal and matriarch, this is no this in no way takes away from the equality that exists for men and women in each tribe. It is just that because women give birth, they give their name to their child. And I understand that. Yeah, I mean Duh. Yeah. It does <laughs> make sense. Right? Especially if you might live in a society where men and women are not as bound in a relationship towards each other. So it's clear that the child of the both of them would rather have like the name but also of the it's, woman. I mean, I think of it for many physical reasons. Um, you know, young children are with their mothers mostly. Yeah, that, that's what right? I mean. And it has nothing to do for the relationship between, you know, like man and woman. Um, but mostly it's like, the child is with the mother for every single stage of their life from the very beginning. So it, it's kind of like within that sense that the the name of the mother goes to the child, right? They create the child, they birth the child, they're with the child like well, a long time afterwards. Yep. And they rear as a primary caregiver. Um, so... It just kind of goes into that same way of thinking. Uh, there, is an there is an emphasis in the relation between women of the same nation and the unity of women within nations. In the same book we have been referencing, Alan writes about this important weave of connection that comes from one another and from that personal relationship with Grandmother Spider. And this is what she writes um, kind of in conclusion, um, talking about that. And in the silence and the quieting shadows of her room, talking about Ephany, mm -hmm. in her bed surrounded by books and notebooks and silence and dust, she thought. And the spiders in the walls, on the ceiling, in the corners, beneath the bed, and under the chair began to gather. And around her room filled with shadows, and the shadows became shapes, and the shapes became women singing, singing and dancing in the ancient steps of the women, the spider, and she began to sing with them. She entered the song. I am walking where I am. I am still in beauty. I am not alone, alive, beautiful, alive, walking, entering. I love that last line, like entering. Mm -hmm. You are always entering kind of like this idea of moving forward within the circle right of that again like going back to like that circularity like you're just entering always you're entering into a new challenge you're entering into a new solution yeah into... you just constantly in the phase of entering uh, but you're yeah. also in type of a phase of exiting all the time right because right? if you're, you're like... entering someplace yeah. you're leaving someplace yeah. but but you instead eventually of like, come back to the place that you exited. Right, but it just kind of instead of, I guess, like, exiting just kind of has such, like, a finality, right? Mm -hmm. I think in kind of just, like, saying, like, it's not a chapter that's ending, it's a new chapter that's beginning. Yeah, I That agree. kind of, like, mentality of entering. Mm -hmm. it, it kind of already says right within the word that if you're entering a place you're leaving a place it implies that um so that word of gratefulness and entering in every aspect of your life and so consequently Ephany spins her own life web in the connections of her tribal community as a healthy and strong native american woman Alan reverses Ephany's powerlessness through the traditional women's stories, which focus on the power of women. Traditional women's stories teach Ephany that life is hard for every woman, and the best thing she can do is walk in balance like her grandmother. Right? Always entering in mm -hmm. balance. Yeah. Um, the dominance of Spider Woman, the female creative principle, befits a culture that remains to this day, again, matrilineal. 
The Hopa curation myth uses many familiar motifs, the creative female principle itself, associated with the earth, the more mysterious divine spirit, the sun god Tawa, the division of the divine parents into new creative forms, the creation by thought, a motif common to many Native American mythologies. Um, an interesting development is the notion of creation by song, an innovation that seems to owe something to Anzazi Hopi ritual song dances. Most important, the Spider Woman story is an example of an emergence myth, a type of creation myth popular among Native American tribes. The emergence story stresses the idea of the earth as a womb from which the people emerge gradually, as in childbirth. At each stage, they grow in knowledge and ability, and only when fully born are they bathed by the light of the sun god's power, the power of logos, the principle that allows for proper social ordering. Right, again, as you were saying, like, order, these, like, four stages, just every time growing and learning. And each stage is very important. Mm -hmm. In a number of Native American traditions, Spider Woman is the creator of the universe and an important source of cultural wisdom and social values. Also called Thought Woman and Grandmother Spider, this divine figure uses the power of her imagination, womb, abdominal, spinneret glands, intellect, emotions, and voice to bring humans into existence and help them develop balanced identities and harmonious community. Robert Boisiri calls her a force and energy whose ability to spin webs of life and language derive from the woman spirit who provides succor and peace, enabling the spider woman to nurture and protect. Paula Gunn Allen writes the spider woman's feminine energy inspires tribal storytellers of both sexes to make pertinent points to some listener um, who is about to make a mistake or who has some difficulty to resolve. According to Allen, contemporary native storytellers help listeners and readers confront bigotry in mainstream society and make communal transcendent meaning out of the human experience. They teach the value of diversity and cooperation, interweaving various literary genres, levels of diction, and narrative techniques to unite people of different races, genders, sexual preferences, and with different social attitudes and spiritual beliefs. Western mythologies original woman was arachne the master weaver of greek mythology right that eurocentric mythology the first time we see spider woman is through that story and many consider her a morality tale the story of a woman who was punished for being conceited and not deferring to male authority by being transformed into a spider however feminist scholars argue that arachne was unjustly punished for taking pride in her artistic talent and body, challenging patriarchal domination. The interwoven structures of power, gender, and, and identity. Just kind of like a way to, you know, compare the two ways of thinking, right? You know, Spider Woman really, in the native um, myth, pushes women and pushes tribes to really find beauty and find being the best at this is not a way of i would say self um importance but a way of you know helping the community not gatekeeping if you have a better way of doing something share it if you have a, a way of learning that will really help you and you think will help others share that and so it's kind of like cool to see how um someone who kind of had that same thought and ideal and confidence um is seen positive in one culture and is seen negative in another culture spider woman plays a crucial role in navajo culture not only as the progenitor of weaving but also as a symbol of balance and harmony according to navajo legend spider woman taught the navajo how to weave and create beauty in their own life, spreading the quote-unquote beauty way, T 
teaching of balance within the mind, body, and soul. Her wisdom was essential for survival in desert environments where resources were scarce and creativity was required for survival, which is what you pointed out as well. Beyond her connection to weaving itself, Spider Woman is considered a model matriarch and source of strength for women within Navajo culture. In some traditional Navajo ceremonies, such as the Kinaalda or girls' puberty ceremony, specially woven blankets called the chief's blankets are used to honor changing women who are symbolically transformed into spider woman. This practice illustrates the deep respect that Navajos have for the power and lessons imparted by spider woman. The story of changing woman is an example of how deeply ingrained spider woman is within Navajo culture. In this story, four stages of womanhood are represented by changing women who teach young women about responsibility and purpose during important stages of their lives. Just as Spider Woman wove geometric patterns into her tapestries with precise intention, changing women connects girls to the knowledge and wisdom needed for each phase of their journey. The importance placed on female strength within Navajo culture aligns with the larger societal values that prioritize respect for one another, nature, and all living beings around us. It may be said that such reverence is further exemplified through traditions like those held during the summertime, powwows, annual events bringing together Native American tribes from across North America, where community members share stories, songs, dance, and prayers. However, while there is much to be learned from the ancient stories and practices of the Navajo people, some argue that it is important not important not to romanticize their way of life. Um, today, Native American communities continue to experience systemic racism, poverty, lack of access to health care and education, and social inequality. It is crucial, and I really mean it, and I and this episode is done in that manner. Um, to approach this subject matter with sensitivity and respect. Um, and I know both Danny and I really um, value these stories and are treating um, such stories for the these nations with a lot of respect and a lot of sensitivity um, because we know um, that we live in a very privileged life uh, and a lot of these Native American nations um, are really, really struggling out there. Navajo tradition recognizes that everything in nature is interdependent. An analogy would be to think about one's body as an ecosystem. If one small piece of that ecosystem is not working correctly, then your whole body can be affected. The notion applies similarly across a range of interconnected systems at play within our environment. For example, unrest among animals in the wild due to environmental factors like pollution or climate change. Ecosystems are devastated rapidly with far-reaching implications. And I think that that's very important um, to talk about, that we are all interconnected. We are all dependent on one another Human beings are not meant to be hyper-independent. Human beings are a communal being. We require community, um, not just with one another, but within ourselves and nature. You know, uh, groceries don't grow at the grocery store. Wait, what? Yeah, groceries grow in nature, and we need to be kind to Mother Earth and be kind to... Um, the nature that we used to feed ourselves and feed others and re- very respect that. Um, and I think sometimes a lot of our politicians and our higher ups just forget that a lot of the things we get don't come from stores, um, but they come <laughs> from, you know, uh, 
children mining yeah, in or Africa. just a farmer that Farmers is actually going on his acres and getting the stuff getting done food and um i mean like our phones yes they're made at apple but all those natural resources come from somewhere emphasis on natural because it comes from nature so um be mindful be respectful to the world around us just as grandmother spider teaches us the importance of it i agree and a co-worker was just like on friday saying something that really resonates with that just like keep your mind healthy keep your body healthy mm -hmm. and keep your soul type of healthy right so like right. work out consume the right type of information the right type of media don't get polarized too much like mm -hmm. try to see different versions of a story and just try to eat and be good right be because balanced. like your body pays it back to you and we always have the saying gabby and i like Sometimes when you wake up and you're like, oh, God, my neck is stiff or like, mm -hmm. oh, my back hurts. I'm like, okay, like we uh, we have to treat our body and treating your body sometimes means to go through a little bit of like short term pain. Let's call it pain. Like you go like exercising, you mm -hmm. do fun stuff, you go out, you go for a walk, you go for a hike, you go whatever you want to do. Right. Be active because your body, you can only take so much from it now If mm -hmm. you don't invest into it, it will yeah. backfire in like and 20, that's not 30 to say, years. Like, and that's not to say that um, we're people who like only eat like <laughs> greens and, and oh, meat no. and stuff But like that's that. that's a whole different no, story. No, no, no. <laughs> But I'm saying like there, for example, a lot of dietitians, especially my dietitian says, hey, there are foods that are good for your body and there are foods that are good for your soul. Um, sometimes food, especially for us humans, we associate food with a lot of happy things. So it's like if you want to eat a cookie because you want to feel like just like a little pick me up, happy, like an emotional like sticker to the heart, um, eat a cookie. It's not bad. It's it's good for you. It's a good balance. If your mind is happy, your body's happy, and if your body's happy, your mind is happy. It's There's no difference. There's no separation between, you know, your mind and your body, just as there's no separation between us and the earth and us from one another. And such profound connections between Spider Woman's teachings and those portrayed in um, Blessing Way ritual further highlight how both artistic expressions via weaving and sacred indigenous customs aim at achieving harmony along various scales from spiritual well-being down to each individual thread woven into place right if in a sweater you take one thread out it creates a hole yeah everything basically like the whole thing falls apart right so <laughs> you know don't don't lose sight of that right yes the sweater is important but also take care of each individual thread The importance of Spider Woman is further evident in the practice of the Navajo Way, a spiritual path that focuses on balance and harmony. This way of life is based on the teachings of the holy people and emphasizes the importance of living with respect, humility, and gratitude. Navajo practitioners believe that by following this path, they will achieve a state of wholeness and balance within their lives. Just as w Spider Woman used interwoven threads to create something beautiful and meaningful, so too can we use use can we uh, hold on let me let me say that from the top. You go. Just as Spider Woman used interwoven threads to create something beautiful and meaningful, so too can we use our own skills and insights to create something of value in the world around us. And I think it's so important to talk about this um because we need one another we not only support our own communities but we should support other communities that are in need of our help um in any way that's possible and appropriate um also 
knowing that what we do here affects not just us, but the whole world, right? If if we want to live um, in the way that Spider Woman really encourages us to live in wholeness and balance within ourselves and with others, it's very important to also um, kind of what we learned today, uh, that we find balance and harmony with those that are below us and those that bully us and be kind to one another even when it's very hard even very when it's very difficult um it it does it means very different things for many different people it doesn't mean accept wrongdoings but you don't have to do wrong if other people have wronged you you um you teach a lot by doing and i know that spider woman um teaches that that the power of imagination and creativity um is very powerful it's uh knowing that different purposes does not mean better or worse purposes it just means different um and that we are all here for a very sacred and very beautiful purpose and that our individual thread woven into place is very important and that's today's story of the spider woman in native american tradition and stories and i think we just broke the record for the longest episode we ever recorded that was a really <laughs> good one and it was a really long but we hope you guys enjoyed it and as usual Stay in touch with us. Let us know what you think. You know, we are available on Instagram. You can send us an email, storiesofasses at gmail.com or Instagram, same thing, without the at gmail.com. And yeah, rate us on Spotify, rate us on any other platform that five we are publishing. Stars, only five stars, only five stars. <laughs> And there's also a little announcement to make. We are soon going to be posting on YouTube as well. Yeah. It's not going to be with the video yet, but it's definitely going to be like another platform that you guys can listen or tune in just yeah. because it has like a... It's, it's, it's a big I, I know that not everybody um, can probably hear the audio, so we wanted to make sure that if you need captions... Um, this transcript for this podcast that that is available to those people who cannot you know are hard of hearing or deaf they have another way of um accessing the podcast that would be me <laughs> um we just wanted to be inclusive uh with our listeners and i want to give a big shout out uh we have seen all your little things uh that you've posted we see all the listeners um so shout out to our listeners in canada in brazil in belgium in germany in virginia like, that's just to name a few we have like so many places that are listening to us and we are just so happy and we are truly truly thankful and appreciative and grateful uh, for you guys taking the time out of your day to share uh your life your routine with us and allowing us to be there even though we don't know where we are um while you're doing grocery shopping or you're sleeping or <laughs> you're at work <laughs> uh, and i mean that because daniel he'll like put on a podcast and 10 seconds later he just falls asleep um but the dulcet sounds of the podcast are in the background in his dreams oh yeah um so if that's you thank you so much um we really do appreciate it and i honestly cannot be more grateful and more happy to see all you wonderful people listening and tuning in. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We hope you have a great start into your week. Stay safe. Stay warm for those that are up somewhere north, like Michigan or wherever else you are. Yeah, it's snowing. So <laughs> be safe, drive safe, and stay warm. Bye, guys. Cheers.